Hello, I'm Deborah Pascali Bonaro of Orgasmic Birth, and I'm really honored today to be here with Dr. Sarah Buckley. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your work. Thanks, Deborah. I'm a family physician or GP by training. I'm the author of the book Gentle Birth, Gentle Mothering, and I have a special interest in the hormones of labor and birth. So I'm also the author of the 2015 report, Hormonal Physiology of Childbearing. So we're talking hormones again today. Yes, and what's really exciting for me, one, all your work is phenomenal, but it's so important to know about how the hormones are a part of pain relief. And I think today, so often we hear about fear and pain and epidurals. And I do wanna honor anyone that's listening. Epidurals can be a wise choice. As one of my mentors, Penny Simpkins says, no one should suffer in childbirth. And when pain becomes suffering, whether it's emotional or physical, epidurals have a place. But I also feel that we greatly overuse them without fully understanding the benefits as well as the risks and also knowing that there are a range of other options that we could be trying as frontline. So can you tell us a bit about that? Well, I agree with you, Deborah. I think every intervention, every method of pain relief has its place. But the way that I see it is that these things can cause what I call hormonal gaps. So during labor and birth, there's a, a whole symphony, an orchestration of hormones that is designed to optimize outcomes for mothers and babies. And when we bring in interventions, including epidurals, including cesareans, including synthetic oxytocin, this can disrupt the hormonal physiology for the mother and or for the baby. So in relation to epidurals, they do have a significant effect on the, the hormones and particularly the hormone oxytocin. We just spoke about that in another video. So oxytocin is the hormone not only that makes birth happen, it causes the rhythmic contractions of labor, but as it's released from the brain, it goes to the uterus, but also within the brain. So it's a really beneficial hormone in labor and birth. It, it has natural pain relieving properties. I mean, it also acts within the brain to switch on these instinctive mothering behaviors and or mammals and one of the ways it does that is by activating the pleasure and reward centers in the mother's brain so that it helps her with calm and connection and as she meets her baby for the first time she's got maximum activation of the oxytocin system she meets her baby she goes this is my baby this is the most rewarding thing in the entire world and looking after my baby will be rewarding and that's why every mammalian mother gives their newborn this dedicated care so it's why you know monkeys elephants mice don't need to go to prenatal classes to look after their babies because of this activation of the oxytocin system. So the problem with epidurals is they interfere with this oxytocin system quite significantly. So this oxytocin system, and I'm going to refer you if you want the, the picture of this to go to my website, sarahbuckley.com, and look in my blogs. There's an epidural blog that illustrates this beautifully. So there's a positive feedback loop that happens in labor that actually drives labor. So the sensations of the contracting uterus feed back by a particular nerve pathway to the brain and it tells the brain in labor to release oxytocin. So the brain releases oxytocin, goes to the uterus, causes even stronger contractions, we get stronger sensations, and then more feedback to the brain. So it's a positive feedback loop. Yeah, it's very important in labor. It's what makes labor accelerate and go faster and what to help the mother push her baby out at the end of labor. But the important thing to know about this positive feedback loop is it's not only increasing oxytocin in the uterus, but it's also increasing oxytocin in the brain. So all these positive calm and connection, pain relieving effects, switching on instinctive mothering behaviors, the dopamine systems it, it depend on this oxytocin feedback loop. And the problem with epidurals, so hormonal gap is, is very big because if when it, in, the more effective it is at abolishing pain, the more effective it is at abolishing this feedback system. So not only does labor slow down, the mother's oxytocin levels go down, as many studies have shown, but also the mother's oxytocin levels in her brain go down. So she loses the calm connection, she loses the pain relief, she loses the stimulation actually of the endorphin system in her brain that puts her into this altered state of consciousness. And she also loses the stimulation of reward and pleasure centers so that she doesn't get that huge rush as she meets her baby for the first time to the same extent that a woman who's had an unmedicated birth gets. So that, that best first date ever that I talked about in the other video doesn't necessarily happen for a woman with an epidural. And if we look at the way that the system works in animals, we'd have to say that the most impactful is going to be the mother having her first baby because she hasn't worked out that oxytocin system in her brain before. So she's gonna be maximally affected by 
the reduction of oxytocin in her brain and she's the one that's most likely to be impacted by the reduction in the pleasure and reward centers. Yeah, and it's so important to understand this, right? Because I think so often women go into a hospital and because we're being offered epidurals like candy, at least I'm in America, mm. it you know used to be when do you want one? No, mm. do you want one? Now it's when do you want one? Mm. So we make this assumption mm. without really saying that there's mm. any downside at all, mm. but we're also not replacing that with more natural ways that we can trigger this feedback loop, mm. as you said, getting great pain relief mm, from mm, brain oxytocin mm. and getting those hormones going. So what other things could they be doing to facilitate more comfort in labor through the hormones? So rather than having an epidural, Draw. yeah, well, I mean, pain in labor, when we're in pain at any time, one of the biggest comforts to us is having someone near and dear to us, familiar to us. That's so important. And we know that women have, when women have their own midwife, continuity of care, when they have a doula, that their need for pain relief is diminished. So that's number one on my list really is, you know, having, yes. having, having supportive help there. Yeah. What other tools do you have in your toolbox? And, and I would say as a doula, I agree, you know, yeah. having that continuity of support, but also freedom of movement. Mm. I find too many people just assume because the bed's there that they get into it and getting in the bed slows labor and makes it more difficult. So movement, touch, and I like to say all those fun ways of getting oxytocin yeah. going. So that kissing and I was just at a great birth where the partner was doing a lot of nipple stimulation and I'm with women a lot that are masturbating and finding so many ways that they actually enhance that feedback mm, loop mm. and bring more pleasure. Exactly, and it's much more fun than a Pitocin drip, right? <laughs> much more fun. <laughs> So we'd love to hear from you. How does that sound to you? What ways are you preparing to bring more comfort and pleasure to your birth? And check out, if you haven't, your blog on epidurals, I think should be essential reading for everyone to truly understand the benefits and the risks and then make the best decision for you and your baby and your situation. So send us your comments. We're waiting to hear them. Thank you. Ring the bell and subscribe for more orgasmic birth content so you can positively prepare for birth and parenting. And follow us on Instagram at Orgasmic Birth. And if you'd like some extra surprises, go to orgasmicbirth.com.